Hey guys, and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you how to create monochrome and duotone designs in Adobe InDesign with the help of Photoshop. Now, monochrome simply means black and white or various tones of one color, which is what we'll be looking at in this example. And duotone is using various tints of two colors. These are commonly used techniques for the color consistency it brings to a design, as well as a good way of keeping print costs down due to only having to print limited colors plus black. There's a link below this video where you can download the template file so that you can easily follow along. So now I'll pass you over to our lead designer, Rory, who's going to take you through how to design using these methods now. Thanks, Ross. Yeah, jumping straight into our InDesign document. So this is the template file that you can download, as Ross mentioned. We have a few examples set up, and these are very simple. Up at the top here, we have our monochrome design example. And as you can see, everything is very consistently colored with just one color, plus the use of black in the likes of the image. Down below, we have a duotone example. So this is the same thing, except we're bringing in this yellow color as well. And this is very very easy to do and it's set up in a way that if we were to send this to print they are only going to need to print these two colors plus black. So down below this we have two more pages set up and these are the designs we're going to convert to be monochrome and then duotone. So jumping straight in obviously this is going to be more focused on the images it's fairly easy to create designs with limited colors when we're dealing with things like text and vectors. So we have a few colors already set up within our swatches here as you can see. On this first monochrome example I'm just going to convert really the black areas to this blue color we have here. Now obviously I could keep them black and it's still going to adhere to that monochrome style because we can use black as much as we want. It's really just any other color that we would have to keep to just one color. So even on this stroked line I'm going to use this blue but what I can also do is use a tint of it. So up in the top of my swatches here we can select a tint of say 20%. If I hit enter you can see that's going to brighten this right up as well. So we can use really any range or tint of a single colour as well as we'll be doing with the image. Now just grabbing the text again I can go back into my swatches, select the text option and change this from black to the blue colour as well. And that's it for all of the graphic elements. Now the image is where we're going to have to jump over to Photoshop. If I jump into our template project folder here I have a links folder within here and you can see we have a few images already set up. Now we're already using one of these images in the other example. You can see the bottom image here, if I preview this, this is the image that's actually in these pages that we're going to be converting. We have to take this into Photoshop to change how it's set up. Now above this we have two other images and they look exactly the same, however they are different. So I'll explain that in just a second, but first I'm just going to open up this image in Photoshop. So as you can see if I go up to image and mode, this is just set up as an RGB image. As you noticed in our other images, they are set to be black and white. Now what I could do is go to image adjustments and desaturate. However if I just save this image down still in RGB as a JPEG it's not going to work for what we're doing. Now if I go back into InDesign I'll open up my images folder again. Now this top image is exactly that. You can see it's got the suffix BW and that just means I've created a black and white version of this RGB image However, this is still set up as RGB. Now the one below it is set up in what's known as grayscale. So this is a different color mode altogether. If I go back into Photoshop, what I'll do is I'll just press Command Z to undo this. We'll go back to our full color image. And if I go into image mode, you can see up at the top here, we have this grayscale option and that's going to basically convert it into a grayscale or black and white image. However, because the actual color mode has changed, this gives us more flexibility now in InDesign Design to apply a color to it. So what I mean by that is if I go back into InDesign, we'll go into our images again, and if I drag this middle image with the suffix GS for grayscale, if I drag this over our RGB image here, you can see it's now changing to be black and white. Now obviously this isn't the desired look we're going for, we want to apply this blue color to it, and that's very simple to do. All I need to do is double click on this to actually select the image itself and not the image frame, and if I go up 
to my swatches now, you can see that we have a black fill applied. If I drop this down and simply select our blue color, it's now going to replace all of the black areas with this blue color. So depending on how dark the area is, the more of the blue is going to show through. Now, if I go back into my images and I try and do this with the RGB black and white image, it's just not going to work. As you can see, I've replaced this. If I double click on the image, we're not even getting an option where the fill has changed to black and all of our swatches are greyed out and that's because it needs to be grayscale. So I'll just press command Z to undo this and there you have a monochrome image design with everything set up with the correct blue color swatch so this is good to go for a monochrome print. Going down to our duotone example though this is ever so slightly different so I'm just going to start applying our other colors to this design so we have this yellow color as well that we're going to use and really the same principles apply I'm just using using each of these colors as I go through. And I'm also thinking about how much they contrast as well. So how dark or light they are as well. So the blue is obviously a much darker color. So I'm using that to contrast the text more against the white background. And then for the likes of this dividing line, the yellow is going to complement nicely against it. It's not going to take over from the text either side. Now with the image, the exact same process applies. So we still have to use the same grayscale image for this to work for duotone as well and I'm just going to jump back into my folder to do this. Drag the grayscale image over. I can do the same thing by double clicking into this frame and selecting the image itself. We'll apply the blue color again. Now to get the yellow in the image as per our example this is also very easy. All I need to do is make sure I'm not selecting the image itself. I just have the image frame selected and now I can go ahead and select our yellow color and that's going to essentially serve as our background color. So wherever there are white areas or the lighter areas the yellow is going to show through in those areas so where we have the dark areas it's going to be blue the light areas are going to be yellow in saying that you want to think about the colors you're using it's always best to have a darker color and then a lighter color so you're getting more contrast when applying this to the likes of images and that's really it it's as simple as that to set up these monochrome and duotone designs so there you have it. Designing in monochrome and duotone are great techniques to try and they're made super easy with the use of Adobe software. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where we reveal our top five secrets to creating beautiful graphic design, along with our six steps to making money as a graphic designer. So make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.